Wait, let me check my frame. Okay, it's perfect. Okay, mine's perfect too. Hello. Hi. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I've known you for a while and we've never done this before. How should we start? Um, you should start. Hi, I'm Jen Soska. And I'm Sylvia Soska. Not Soska. <laughs> and we're the Soska sisters. Formerly known as the Twisted Twins, but still known as the Twisted Twins. And we would like to do an interview of each other. Soska on Soska, as we were inspired by Cronenberg on Cronenberg. For those of you just tuning in, we remade Rabid this year and we went back to film school of our own study learning about Cronenberg. Yeah, and uh, as you might guess, we do a lot of interviews, but a lot of the interview questions I find are just very repetitive, very the same. And you know, I know every interview question that you've ever been asked, I've ever been asked, so I thought, wouldn't it be fun if we asked each other a few questions? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I get to start? Yeah. Which one are you? <laughs> no, seriously, which according, one are you? According to Google, I'm Jen Soska, but that's not true. I'm Sylvia Soska. You're Sylvia Soska. I'm Sylvia. I'm si- don't trust the Google image. This is Sylvia. Okay. That's cool. So, 11 years, you've been doing... Uh, massive blood drive PSA campaign with filmmakers internationally around the world in uh, in accordance with Women in Horror Recognition Month, which is every February brainchilded by Hannah and Erotica. It's 11 years now. Yes. Why, why did you do that? Why did I do the blood drives? Yeah. Uh, the blood drives are really important to me because I believe that it's our civic duty to give blood. Yeah. And I think I, I'm one of those people that I don't want just me to make it. I want all of us to make it. And I like to continue to do things that service each other. And I know that a lot of us don't have a lot of money and we're all struggling right now. But blood is something that you can always give. And blood is really the gift of life. And I think the main reason that people don't donate blood is because they're afraid. They don't like a little prick. They don't like a needle. They're afraid. Even seeing blood makes you fear for your own mortality. So I wanted to... Uh, rouse the horror fans because I think they're the most fearless, most compassionate, loving people there are. And uh, get that out there. And now horror is kind of synonymous with blood donation and Women in Horror Month is synonymous with blood donation. And I think that's pretty cool. You're the marketing one, eh? No comment. (laughs) So, is it Saska or Soska? It's Saska like ayahuasca. Sauce is a boss. Oh. Well, if you've been saying it wrong, I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. I'll just pretend you weren't. Just, just let's just me. let's let's just eternal sunshine of the spotless mind and let's it's gone. <laughs> you sing anyone? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> uh yes. Oh, nice. You? Yeah. Is it someone anyone else can see? <laughs> <laughs> comment Uh, what are you doing next what project am I doing next yeah well you never really truly know what project is going to go next but I'm hoping that the next film we do is Bob which is an original monster movie which is really about abuse and surviving in the cycles of abuse and uh sounds fun yeah it's actually a really dark comedy because it deals with such a dark subject matter that it has to also be really funny which I think it is You've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. What is your happiest moment as a filmmaker that gave you the most strength, the most pleasure, whatever, it can be anything? You. Me? Yeah. I was, in, I was here before you started filmmaking. It's always been you. Oh, stop that. Yeah, oh. no. Like, uh, I didn't, I, a Rabbit was the hardest film to make of my career. And before then, I had gotten so many hard knocks working in this industry. Uh, I was actually considering maybe looking for something else to do. And you know what happened there. And the cool thing was that you forced us all to finish. And that's that's a hell of a producing uh, capabilities. I know you get a lot of credit for what a great director you are, but you've actually produced every film we've made. Huh, so have you. I mean, not as much as me, but so have you. Let's talk about Rabbit. Okay. And here's a really good question. Why did you want to remake Rabbit? What gives you the right? Yeah. I had no right. Wow. 
I'm glad that you can admit it. Now we can start to rebuild. Uh, I love David Cronenberg. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want there to be uh, what people, uh, what horror fans would call uh, a shitty remake. Soulless. And so we hired cast and crew to be as true to David's work as possible because uh, it was the first time that we ever did a remake. It was very self-aware, so we were very self-aware of everything that we were doing to the point that we made schadenfreude a huge theme because we knew there was no way we were going to end up being able to go through this process without being attacked. Yeah. Uh, if I could speak to that point yeah. as well. That was actually, and people might not realize, the plan yeah. all along. Dan, don't give up your master plan. No, They're going to know you're we, smart. When we remade Cronenberg's Rabbit, yeah. uh, it came to us. I wasn't look. I don't. I mean, Dead Ringers is definitely the film of his that I feel more uh, intensely about. That I could do more about because you know our perspective were identical twins. But Rabbit was really a, a passion project for us, on two ways. I know that uh, David was dealing with the passing of his wife, and I think we all can realize that as much as we like to work, there are just things in life that are more important. And there was a lot of uh, pressure to involve Dave in the project. I never really wanted to do that. I just wanted for when he came back to the public, for him to be welcomed with this onslaught of love from the fans. And that love came in two ways. Either you're kind of a happy person and you're well-adjusted, and you saw what we did with Rabbit and you really loved it, you're really excited. I don't think there's been a more like self-aware, loving remake ever created. And then, they're the assholes. We made something for the assholes as well because we. If knew you want to well. be mean, that's your mo, man. I mean, we knew full well that. Uh, oh, sorry, I talked over you. We made it because we knew that there would be people that would hate on us and hate on the film. But one thing they wouldn't hate on is Mr. David Cronenberg. As much as they hated us, I mean, we might as well have put ourselves on a cross that we knew the comparison was going to be made. And even some people who may have not seen Rabbit in years are happy to cut us to shreds, all the while saying, David is a genius, which makes me happy. I mean, I can take a lot of bullets and a lot of hits, but I just wanted to make something that uh, would be for the fans and for David and uh, if it's not for you I honestly don't really care. David said filmmaking is painful, you agree? Life is painful. What do you hope people will say about you at the end of your career? Mm. I'm glad that I uh, got to make this movie at this point in my career because I had been chasing films and filmmaking and wanting an audience to really like the films that I do and a big broad group of people. I don't have that interest anymore. Mm. I care more about the individual and individual relationships in my life because that's far more important. If uh, the film has an effect on people, that's awesome. But an audience's interaction with my work is none of my business. Which is your favorite film? Of mine? Yeah. I haven't made it yet. You? My favorite film? Yeah. Of ours? <laughs> Depends on my mood. I go through cycles of like I can't even watch this movie because you know you remember the bad parts of it the, that maybe the bad parts happened during it before it after it <laughs> uh, I would have to say that my favorite film of ours is American Mary Wow I mean rabbit is a really close second but American Mary was originally us and I think Mary gave a lot of closure to people that really needed it and uh, it means one thing to make movies, but I think it means a whole lot more to, you know, make life just a little less painful for those around it, if that makes sense. It does. How have you changed since you started? I haven't. This is all about transformation this month. It I know. happened. 11 years is a long time that you've been directing for 13. Yeah. I guess the transformation that I feel that I've gone through is that I was really worried before and I had a, I still have a lot of anxiety definitely from my adventure that I've been through and my journey so far but I was worried always that I was not good enough 
And the truth is, like, everyone feels that way. And the more that I learn about film, I, I learn that the parts that you do are so small, but the way that you affect people's lives are so big. Mm. And I've also learned that there's no such thing as a good film or a bad film. There's just films that don't reach audiences, and some people connect with material or not. I mean, some films that are considered bad are films that have deeply changed or saved lives. So for someone to say, oh, this is a bad film, it's like, bad film, bad. It's ridiculous. I think the template of language is imperfect to the nuance of human emotion and saying bad and good, best and better just shows how stupid we are with our use of it. No, oh, I agree. Words create lies. Pain can be trusted. Oh, audition. <laughs> or to quote William Burroughs, language is a virus from outer space. Oh, you brought it back to Mr. Cronin. I had like to, absolutely. What is your sincerest hope for Women in Horror Month? What a lot of people don't know is that Women in Horror Month was the very first time our first film, Dead Hooker in a Trunk, was screened at two different film festivals, one in the UK and one in Texas. And why that was so special is because we had a year and a half of submitting to film festivals that rejected us on title alone, but still kept our money. And uh, we weren't asking for a hangout, we were just asking for a venue so we could show our art. And from that, it was amazing, it spread like wildfire. A while, like a wildfire and to me it was really important to see that effect in my life and then I was always working with professionals that said you always send the elevator back down so always send the elevator back down and a lot of the times when I, I work with these women and I, I always wonder if they remember me I was like when you're running a studio and you're looking for a director for Spiderman remember me remember me because I run coffee good I can get Toby Maguire his latte like that where do you see yourself in 10 years? Like, what's the dream? You've done a lot. You've written for Marvel. You wrote Black Widow. My dreams are not a career dream. Oh. <laughs> How about you? What are my dreams for the next 10 years? Okay. Well, it depends if the zombie apocalypse comes or not. If the zombie apocalypse comes, I hope to be, like, some kind of warrior woman. Kind of leading the path and like killing the animals. They'll need directors in the future, Jen. Well, Even so more so. Film it. It'll be hard. To, well, we'll have to go digital. Film will be impossible during the zombie apocalypse. All the art house directors being like, we should still shoot on film. This is the last thing of film. Tarantino just it. carrying a camera and filming <laughs> the zombie <laughs> carnage. <laughs> Paul Thomas Anderson, no, we need to <laughs> save it. <laughs> I'm glad they lived through the zombie apocalypse. That's nice. <laughs> Excuse me. So, you kind of, you kind of phrase called stop, fo you kind of phrase called follow your stupid fucking dreams. I did. Why did you call people's dreams stupid? And why did you make up that phrase? Stupid and fun. I don't know. I don't know if that phrase has existed before me. I'm not going to Paris Hilton and say I created that's hot. But That's follow it. your stupid fucking dreams. I don't know if someone else said it, but I really ran with it. And I think that uh, at one point, we give up the things that we have a passion for, that we have a fire in our guts to do, because people tell us to make the safe choice. And they tell us that our dreams are like ridiculous. Like, you're never going to be a writer. You're never going to be president. You're never going to be a director. You're never going to be an actress. You're never going to be any one of these things. And the people that say those kind of things at one point gave up on their dreams. And if they see somebody not only chasing but living their dreams, it reminds them that they could have done the same. So the dreams that you have that are stupid fucking dreams, I like to say those are the only dreams worth having. Those are the dreams that you need to shoot for. I would say aim for the stars because if you hit the moon, it's still pretty good, right? You should have big stupid fucking dreams. You sure did. Huh? What you dreams did. did I have? Oh, this? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have anything you'd like to tell anybody who has aspirations to do what you've done? Somebody who hasn't started yet? Yes. I would say uh, carve your own path out. Definitely. I think that there are a lot of filmmaking books like Rebel Without a Crew and Make Your Own Damn Movie series by Lloyd Kaufman that uh, are a great guideline for filmmakers to start out, but you have to take into reference when those film books were written. Mm. I mean, Rodriguez was shooting on film. 
back then, and we didn't have as much international films as pos as we do right now. And you know, the the di industry is changing. You're not gonna <laughs> see Bob and Harvey Weinstein discover you like we've. Oh, we've, dude, dude, that, that he's probably gonna come back. He might. I mean, <laughs> he's gonna knows? come back. Who knows? Who knows? It might be possible. But you need to create your own brand, and your brand is whoever you are, and whoever you are is truly, you know, what you should share with people, and create your own content. Never sell your intellectual property, hang on to it, because there are people who are creative, and there are people who have money, and they're rarely the same persons. So, uh, yeah, follow your stupid fucking dreams, don't give up on them easily. If you steadily work towards your dreams every day, you'll get there. Uh, don't judge your success by somebody else's. If you're not Quentin Tarantino and making like every movie and not changing a word and getting exactly your cast or everything that he claims to, don't think that you suck. And the natural state of a film is to not exist. So if you can make it, fantastic. Two questions okay. for you. One is the question you just asked me, but the second one is almost the same question you asked me. What advice would you give people starting out? And also, what advice would you give people who've been here for a long time? If you're starting out, start. Don't just talk about it. Like, find what you can get for free. Call in your friends. You can shoot a movie on a cell phone. Think of a concept that a studio wouldn't be brave enough to do, something that means something to you, and just do it. If you've been here for a while, let other people in. Be nice. But uh, rest when you're tired. Don't give up. People don't remember that. It's nice to be important. But it's more important to be nice. I love you, Jen. I love you too. And I'd also like to thank Dread Central for supporting the Women in Horror Recognition Month Blood Drive Collective this year. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dread Central. And guys, all you have to do to celebrate, uh, 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 roll it up and win. Good karma. Your donation saves up to three lives or six babies. Yeah, six babies. That's adorable. Send you to give. Happy Women in Horror Month. <coughs> Bye. Mac, if I can get you here, please. I'm here.